Hello, this is Jaren playing Oxygen Not Included, and here I am in the inverted world. Just notice that water is filled up in this spot. It's not completely filled, about 600 kilograms. That's fine. I've turned this off so that no more water goes into that chamber. And that will do for some cooling and actually act as a sort of hydro battery that I can store power during the day and actually have uh, that turn to power at nighttime. I also have this area over here, which is also going to draw power from hot magma. Very tiny bit of water, 410 kilograms inside that liquid reservoir. And that is going to push wa that water in underneath this, uh, those steam turbines when I'm in need of power. And it will continue to direct it, uh, that water to go in underneath that steam turbine when and only when power is actually needed. Otherwise, it'll store it inside this uh, liquid reservoir. I also need to have the top of those steam turbines cooled with some brine, so I'll do that a little bit as well. But I need to drop some liquid on top of the steam turbine to interact with the steam turbines themselves and the uh, the uh, cold brine line that I'll be having in there. This area over here is no longer necessary. This is my old rebel generation area, so I can actually destroy it. This is the major construction that I did in the last episode. It is the nuclear power plant, so it's got the ability to have some water go inside the research reactor. I'm also dropping some water on top of the steam turbines, or steam, sorry, not these, the, the um, aqua tuners and the research reactor itself. I've got doors that's going to operate, that open when I've got too much nuclear waste in there. Just having some brine go into the line, that's going to be the actual cooling line that goes all on top of all the steam turbines and goes through the aqua tuner when it gets too hot. So that's going to keep those steam turbines under 100 degrees. Those will be operating quite a bit. So it's actually going to take quite a bit of power just to maintain the coolness of those steam turbines. But my expectation is because I have so many steam turbines that the overall power usage that I'll get from it will be far greater than operating those aqua tuners, which I, I hope and expect them won't be operating 100% of the time, but they actually probably will be running quite often just to keep the steam turbines cool. I am getting to the point where I'm thinking about how to distribute the heat from the center that's going to be very hot, and a little bit of heat, of course, that I'm also going to get on the two bottom wings of the nuclear power plant to go to all the steam turbines, including the top ones, and what I'm going to do is build a conveyor rail. I'm going to have four different lines, one for each wing. The idea is each wing will be connected very close to the uh, actual research reactor itself. That's going to take that hat. That's going to have most of the heat, and then it's going to transport some uh, actual physical material, most likely granite. Granite is a good material for interacting heat, so it's going to take that granite pieces in an infinite loop for these four different um, four different conveyor line loops and so it will make a bypass through the research reactors this is the very hot zone where granite will uh, hot pieces of granite will heat up it will then transport that those uh, hot pieces of granite to each of the wings so it's going to visit some of the steam that's on the edges there and that'll just allow some of the steam turbines that are on the far sides, particularly the top ones, that doesn't have access uh, directly to either research reactor or the uh, the aqua tuner, and allow that to also participate in the power process and actual cooling as well. So I'll, I'll be dumping a lot of the liquid that I get from the steam turbines on top of the research reactor to actually keep it and maintain its uh, heat so it actually doesn't get way, way too hot. So we're actually going to have to cancel or out some of uh, some of this build because I, I want the, each of these lines to be in, independent, not as in it's not connected together. So I've got the two top ones. I'm going to have to fix, well, let's change that, fix that there. Also having the granite uh, conveyor lines go through granite at the bottom where possible because granite tiles will actually interact really well with that material and actually heat up those tiles and then that tile itself can interact with the steam that it's on top of. Now I don't want to do the same thing with the insulated tiles above so instead of running the conveyor line through the tiles above I'm having it run just below the steam turbines heating up the steam that's there and that's the actual steam that the steam turbine is going to be inputting into its system 
converting to water and, pro and turning some of that excess heat to, uh, to power. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting in, all I need is a single liquid bridge to actually create an infinite loop. And I'll just need to load that with the granite here in a second. I actually want to have a bypass there for one of the input for enriched from uranium. I'm having this designed such that it lo goes through the bottom first. So the idea is that very hot liquid or the hot granite rather is going to run through the tiles at the bottom and then make its way up to visit the steam turbines and then go back into the uh, research reactor area to take on more heat. One of the nice things with this world and the actual inverted world is there's a lot of copper. Well, it, it actually, it's not so much copper here. There's uh, a lot of aluminum ore over here, but there's a lot of copper in the inverted world. So I'm not having too much difficulty in finding the amount of copper that's necessary for building this. Over here, I've got the conveyor loader. This is what's going to load all the granite into the system. This is a one-time thing, so once the granite is there, it will not need to continually be loaded. So this is just going to be a temporary zone where my dupes can throw in some granite in this bin. The sweeper is going to put it in the conveyor loader, and that will give me all the granite that's necessary for temperature management, a temp temperature distribution inside the research reactor. Okay, so and once I'm done, you'll hopefully see this later, but I'll need to leave a room for one tile, uh, one, one piece of conveyor rail that is actually empty for this thing to actually operate. But what I can do in the end is actually destroy one of the conveyor rails that has a piece of granite, reconstruct it, and then this thing should move once it all is said and done. Otherwise, it'll be sort of be in a jam situation where it won't be able to move. So that is where the loader is going to be and the sweeper, and we'll have that loaded as soon as that's constructed. Here in the inverted world, I'm putting the liquid shutoff that's going to determine whether water goes inside the uh, chamber underneath these steam turbines. That's only going to happen when either it's way too hot, that's why I've got a temperature sensor in there, or the battery indicates that I'm actually in need of power. So if I'm either in need of power or it's way too hot, then some the tiny amount of liquid that's in that liquid reservoir will be dumped in here. And I'll continually be getting liquid out of the steam turbines in the form of water that will go back into the liquid reservoir. And it'll go through the same decision point. I noticed that I put an automation wire on that, sh that uh, liquid sh uh, vent. I did not mean to do that. So what I'm going to do is just put a switch there and have it always in the true situation. That uh, that really wasn't necessary. I could go in there and destroy that automation water, but I'll just put in a switch. It won't matter. Notice that I've got some water there. I'm aiming for about 75 kilograms before I shut that off. That'll be enough water such that it doesn't flood, but it's going to allow the cold uh, brine to go through it to cool it off when that water is too high. And I have a temperature sensor on the right side of these two steam turbines to tell this, uh, this wind operate. And I'll have another liquid shut off for that in the future once I get to that point in the construction of all this. In the nuclear power plant setup here, I'm starting the process of loading in granite where I can. Just notice that the engineer and anyone that has the Medtronic skill has yet to actually fully construct all the cycle for, or the four different loops for this. The other thing that I could do is radiant pipes, but I'm choosing conveyor rail for my distribution of heat. This is getting very close to construction and I'm realizing that I should have built the conveyor rails before I have uh, constructed the research reactor. That should be fine. I'm, I'm hoping that ladder on the top left had to destroy one of the Red Bull generators and I, I suspect the dupe uh, dupes will be able to reach all those conveyor layers because they, they can get down to two tiles away from where they are. Also have a radiation sensor I put in there that's going to access the power or connect to the power. The idea is if it's not detecting enough radiation, meaning that the Red Bull, the research reactor is currently not active, there really is no point in wasting your power in Red Bull generators. So just shut the power off for all of them. And just make sure that the power that you're shutting off is just for the Red Bull uh, generators and not connected or associated with the aqua tuners. The other bit here is I don't have enough steel to fully complete this, but I'll start this process. Each individual one of these is going to have a shutoff, manual shutoff, and the purpose for this is just to control how many Red Bull generators, generators I need at any given time, because I may not have enough power to begin with to run them all. 
All right, so just waiting for all these to be complete. I'm just going to specify above, let's say a thousand be enough. If it detects a thousand um, units of radiation, then it'll allow power to go through. Over here, I am actually destroying the first conveyor line. Actually, this is not, not operating. So what I need to do is I mentioned this earlier. I need to destroy a single piece of line, reconstruct it. So that's just going to make a single line available. And that's going to allow that thing to go in an infinite loop once I get to, to that point. And I'll do the same thing. Actually, this one doesn't even need to need anything. Is that possible? Because I've got the two conveyor lines. I'm not sure. I just got lucky that it didn't get jammed. But anyway, if I just destroy this and bypass that, that one actually seems happy. So I've got two of them. Two of the, well, once this uh, conveyor line on the right is constructed, which maybe, no, they've delivered or they haven't actually done the construction. That, uh, that is in nearly in place. The top two, actually I'm very close to getting the top right one also filled up. I might be able to do that very shortly here, perhaps in this little clip. So there it is, it's jammed. Not a problem, I'm gonna destroy the input. I'm gonna destroy one conveyor line just as I did on the bottom one. Then after that's destroyed, I will then deconstruct or reconstruct that conveyor line and I'll have both the ones on the right side operating in an infinite loop. So again, the whole idea is just to transport some granite material to the very hot zone in the center and just distribute that to the uh, different locations where the steam turbines are so that hopefully I'll be able to get all, all of them generating a good amount of power and not just the ones that are closest to the research reactor itself. So that's the whole idea here. And I'm hoping that just this conveyor line of the granite will be enough. If it's not, I might add in a liquid a radiant pipeline, but I suspect that won't be necessary. We'll see how this turns out. The other bit is I'm realizing that I should, before I constructed these pipes, I should have put in some brine that sits on top of the steam turbines to actually interact with uh, the steam turbine itself to keep them cool. So I'll put that piece in now. I'm going to have a shutoff, a liquid shutoff valve sitting there so I can actually turn it off. I'm aiming for about 75 kilograms of liquid that's going to sit on top of the steam turbines. That's going to be enough to actually take on a little bit of heat from the steam turbines themselves. The brine line that's going to go through that will then keep that uh, brine that's sitting next to on the uh, steam turbines cool that will interact with the machinery itself, keeping it cool so that the steam turbine stays well below 100 degrees so it continue to operate, take in, uh, take in the hot steam, converting it to cooler water, cooler water I say, uh, not really cool water, but at least from the perspective of steam, uh, cooler. And a really nice thing, it doesn't matter how hot the steam is, hotter the steam, you get more power, but uh, up to a certain point, but the, the nice thing is you always get water. And because water can never be 100 degrees, it, uh, it's certainly ne never going to be more than that. In fact, it's always consistently 95. So it doesn't matter how much this hot the steam is, you'll always get that cool, well, not cool, but the, that temperature of water. And that will be thrown on top of the research reactor, making sure it stays cool and not get a runaway situation. Also, just, just uh, skipping, realize I really don't need the liquid shutoff. I can actually just have automation wire go directly into the steam or into the liquid vents themselves. And just the whole, whole point is once I get to that 75 kilograms of uh, liquid, I just want to be able to shut off. So the same thing above here. This one's going to take a little bit longer because I've got a lot more steam turbines. Just make sure that before you do this, that you have covered all the drywalling because one thing I don't want to have happen is some brine being wasted in here just by the fact that it's being leaked out into space. All right, so I'm just going to need some bridge to connect to this brine line that's going around. This is a one time load, meaning that once I reach the desired amount of around 75 kilograms, I'll shut this off. I can actually destroy the pipe and hopefully never need to refill this again. So that's the point of the button is just to shut it off at a particular point rather than having to wait for a dupe to uh, destroy something. All right, so I've got one more 
conveyor line to uh, to operate but I've got enough water on top of these steam turbines so it's pretty much the same thing it's kind of a mirror image on both sides of them uh, the top one is just a single side of, uh, of water but the idea is I'm gonna have enough water here let's see this line has to be connected that once I just connect this pipe I should start the process of getting my 75 kilograms of uh, liquid there and then I'll have enough liquid for my cooling. I just need to concentrate on the fact that I have uh, a full brine, enough brine in the actual water line itself. So it goes between the different aqua tuners and then on top of that. And make sure that I've got a radiant pipe that sits on top of those steam turbines as well, which I do. Slow to get some steel, I'm noticing in this point, because I have more liquid vents I want to create but I can't quite do that now I'm just having a note uh, I mentioned this earlier but make sure that there's no drywall why am I getting a small oh I know what's happening is I'm getting actual a decrease in the amount of kilograms and it's concerning me it's just distributing the because this one's much larger I haven't noticed in the other one it's just taking the dense amount of water that's been dropped off in the center and going towards the sign so that should equalize at some point so I've got about 50 kilograms going to aim for a bit more. Over here, I'm having issues. This is quite annoying. This happens every now and then. I want to go to the decil lines. I mentioned before that I'm short in steel. In particular, it's lime specifically. I th maybe it's just those uh, red bolt reflectors that I need to get rid of. If I can select those, get my dupes destroyed, perhaps. I can get this rocket out there. And I mentioned this is going to be, I'm expecting the very last rocket with carbon dioxide that I ever launch from this point on with the nuclear power plant and the tons and tons of red bolts that I'm going to be getting from that. There really is no need for anything but a red bolt engine from this point on. So this is going to uh, allow me to still don't seem to do it. Okay, there's nothing directly above it. Huh. Got water, carbon, those uh, those lines shouldn't matter. This, uh, I might restart the game. I don't know if this is a bug or something like that, but one more time to use this rocket, please, and then I'll destroy it and I'll never do this again. Um, is there something behind it that I can't quite see? I'm not quite sure. I've noticed that I had some uh, ladders behind this, uh, f the uh, Safer module. I'm suspecting that's it's kind of difficult to see. So I'm just having to go through the painful process of every tile, uh, seeing if there's a ladder there. I think it's just ladders that go across that line. So I'm hoping that if I can select each of those ladders, destroy them, I'll be able to choose a destination, well, the Desolins, get there send some fossil back to this world so I can generate the final bit of steel I need to cap off the nuclear power plant, get that operational, get lots of power, get some red bolts out of that, and reposition some of these red bolt engines such that they're closer to the nuclear power plant for fueling and making room for some future stuff in space, just tying things up a bit outside of the nuclear power plant when I get it constructed, essentially. Still no idea, though. I'm pretty sure I've got rid of all the ladders and I have a clear path error meaning I've got I definitely have enough fuel but uh, so I'm gonna let the dupes out because I can't figure this out um, stumped I'm hoping this is maybe I have already restarted once I haven't restarted since I destroyed the ladders uh, let me destroy the ladder on the side shouldn't matter let me bump this up that might just give me a little bit more view what's behind it is it possibly that heavy want wire I don't th didn't think that would be an issue but uh, how about I go reroute that and see what that does just notice that I'm running low on water and part of that reason is because the brine geyser is uh, hasn't produced enough water for me but or, or uh, brine rather but this area over here, I'm actually digging down to it to take advantage of the salt water that's here. This is going to be a temporary solution. I've done this in a spot before. I'll just feed this into the desalinator that I already constructed on the right side of my base up uh, up to here. Actually, they've got 
I've got some salt water, so I've actually destroyed this spot at the above. So that's actually dropped some salt water down into that uh, pump down here. This this used to be empty, so now I've got two chambers for salt water. It's not replenishing because I have that hot salt water geyser uh, turned off, but this should solve things short term. This is uh, the inverted world. I'm just having some salt or a uh, brine rather. Uh, moved over to liquid reservoirs to the right side because uh, the liquid reservoirs weren't in the way of some construction that I want to do. And what I'm doing at this point is just having a temperature gauge for the brine that goes out, determining its temperature, and if it's too warm, making sure that the line goes through the aqua tuner. So this is the very similar setup that I had on top of the nuclear power plants or on the sides of the nuclear power plants with the aqua tuner. And the idea is it will tell it when it needs to go in there for cooling or when it needs to bypass it and go directly into the liquid reservoir. And that line will go, initially it's just gonna keep the two steam turbines themselves cool. But eventually, so this is the temperature gauge that's gonna have connected with automation to that shutoff. But eventually this is also gonna take cold brine to the base itself to freeze some ice so that some sleet wheat can be planted in various different spots so I can switch from an actual farm to wild sleet wheat that doesn't need any maintenance on the behalf of my dupes or resources such as dirt. I've had just almost enough uh, steel to create these switches and the idea here is I can control whether each one of these is on or off. So I can control the number of rebel generators that operate. They take a lot of power, almost 500 uh, units worth of, for each of them. So I'm gonna actually turn them all off. Actually, if I hit the copy button, I can turn them all off at the same time. And I can choose how many that I can handle. So based on the number amount of power that I'm generating and my red bolt needs, I can turn on a, on a few. In, in reality, you're probably only gonna use two or three but uh well we'll see uh, oxy fern seed why not that's something that uh, can't get otherwise i have destroyed the top of this rocket to see if this will uh, do anything but i'm i've also destroyed the interplanetary launcher but i think it's the heavy watt wires that was going through the rockets uh, you know that's causing an issue maybe you can't do that with the interplanetary or with the um safe air module or perhaps it was the uh, interplanetary launcher that was on the left. Either way, I, it looks like I can now set a destination. The destination set is going to be the Desilens. Two dupes, the same dupes that were flying before. I'm just going to have those those dupes go on. Their goal is to get collect and dig out and collect as much fossil as they can, or at least let's say two bins worth. That'll be brought back to the homeworld. I'll be able to convert that into the uh, rock crusher into lime and I'll be able to get a large amount of steel. The other thing that I'm doing now is I'm starting the process of relocating my platforms. I want to be careful about this from two perspectives. I want to make sure that the Red Bolt engine platform is low enough that I can create all the things above it. Now you can calculate, I think it's 19 tiles tall. So as long as you have from wherever the top, you know, if this is, if you get 19 tiles, you're fine. But in addition to the 19 tiles, I also want to have a ladder at the very top so my dupes can get across because I'm going to have a, an intense amount of rad bolts be firing into these guys here. And one thing I don't want to do is to have my dupes have a path that they cross those uh, rad bolts. So I'm just going to make sure that it, it's actually 20 tiles above it 19 for the actual rock itself and one for ladders so that the dupes can actually get between the different rockets without having to cross the path with the rebels themselves because they'll take damage from uh, quite quickly if they're if there's an intense amount of rebels that fire through this currently or in the previous rebel uh, distribution system i was looking to minimize the amount of Mount of dupes actually changing this from granite um, to igneous rock. This is the path that the uh, dupes will be able to get across the top. But yeah, previously I wasn't concerned about this because rebel generation was so much slower before. Now that I have a lot more rebels, it's just going to be an intense amount of damage that my dupes are going to take. The other thing that I'm going to look out for, 
Uh, I don't want to run heavy watt wires through the rocket path just in case that was causing an issue. But the other thing is heat from the Red Bolt engine and things like the pipes. So I might actually need to convert some of the pipes, particularly the ones that are transporting water, to uh, insulated ceramic so that they'll uh, avoid overheat, hopefully overheating that water. I'm just going to start destroying the ladder and heavy watt wires that are that's in the spot where this future rocket is going to be located and this this will be as actually from this point on other than that one last carbon dioxide engine i suspect all my rockets from this point on will be red bull engines only i don't think i'm going to experiment with the hydrogen based ones but who knows that is much farther in the future so i'll make that uh, final decision later but most certainly most of the rockets will be rebel engines from this point all right so this rocket is fueled it has a clear path finally let's get the crew to go on it that's uh, the two dupes that is going to go to the desolens so the desolens is not going to be a full-time demand uh, asteroid dupes are going to go there only as necessary so if i'm low on oil they may head over there to produce a bit more oil or in this case, fossil is uh, is the goal. So I'll just take, actually, <laughs> while they're up there, forget about the fact that this has a uh, data bank generation uh, um, uh, equipment on it. So why not uh, just have those uh, that, that be generated? Because I haven't completed all my research. So actually, I might uh, lie to me, may, may need to send this rocket up a few more times in the future, just based on uh, that has that equipment if I don't have enough data banks. But, that should be it for this rocket. This is a big moment for the inverted world. I have a brine line, a cooling brine line, that uh, is going through here. Just going to make one change to this spot. It has a temperature gauge to tell it whether this brine should go in there because I don't want that brine to freeze the water. So I'm going to have a liquid shut off here. That's going to put it through the steam turbines when the water in the steam turbine is too hot. And it will bypass that continuing on in the loop when it is uh, cool enough. So that's going to need some uh, little bit help of some liquid bridges to direct this such that it does that. So it's going to either go through the liquid shot off if it can, if it's needed in cooling. The automation for that is going to be going from here into that liquid shut off. And when that temperature sen sensor, since water is too hot, it will operate allow that to go through of course this is going to need power so i'll construct this in there and i can get rid of the one that temporary shut off that used to be there so now that this rocket has left i can take advantage of the fact that uh, that is empty i can relocate a platform in the new location that i want it to exist which is uh, to have exactly 20 tiles above it but also be as close as possible to the exit of the red bull to generation i'm going to have four that uh, i suspect that's going to be the total amount of rockets that I'll have. Who knows? We'll check in, check in the future to see if that, that ends up being the case. But that is the plan. Again, making this out of igneous rocks. The heat from the Red Bull engines uh, doesn't do any damage. The solar panels that you see in the uh, below there, they're going to be they're going to have to be lowered from the uh, heat from the Red Bull engine as well. I'll do that in time. The other thing, I'm just going to look for still going to try to avoid to have those uh, that heavy watt wire from going through the rocket itself just in case that was a uh, cause of some of the actual path issues so I'll, I'll wait for that that heavy watt wire to be constructed first before i actually destroy this though i can see this one is not necessary nor is that section there so slowly able to get rid of some of the heavy watt wires that goes through my rocket area and also have a set of ladders that are going to be accessible from the top to go into the rocket for my uh, dupes to be able to access. Another oxy for seed. Uh, definitely take advantage of that when I get it. So the rocket here has landed and the mission is to get some fossils. So I'm going to actually dump all this on the ground, tell my dupes I want to load inside this bin uh, fossil. It's the only thing that I want on this particular mission. I'm aiming to have both of these filled with fossils. And I may, there should be a fair amount of fossil on the ground inside the uh, desolins, but I'm gonna actually get them to dig out more, probably they'll need to dig out more to actually completely fill those. 
So actually, there's, I'm going to start at the top since it's going to be a little bit less transportation for them. And we'll see how far I need to go to fill those bins. And hopefully this will be enough uh, fossil to create the lime for the steam of my nuclear power plant. This is the start of inside of another Red Bolt rocket engine. So this is just the piping for both the water and oxygen that's going to be inside, maximizing the amount of those two materials before it actually goes into use inside the rocket itself. I'm going to avoid leak or, uh, leaking oxygen into this until the food storage area is also complete. In this episode, I've continued the process of my nuclear power plant. I've got conveyor lines to distribute the heats, started the process of relocating some of my Red Bull engines, and sent a dupe on, she dupes actually, on a mission to get some fossils so I can get the final amount of steel to get this thing constructed. If you want to see this whole thing uh, completed, see the next video or perhaps the one after. Uh, like, subscribe, and see you then.